I'm a singer, a songwriter, and a music producer. I travel around the world with my music, but Singapore is where I call home. It's a small place, but there's so much for me to learn about this tiny island and all it has to offer. I'm a musician, and nature has always been a great source of inspiration. I even named the songs I wrote after nature. I fake this smile until I mean it. It will take some time, but I'll get there and I'll see the green and grass. What is it about nature that soothes our soul? And how can it enrich my innermost self? Maybe I'll get some answers from these people who have found ways to bring nature into their lives. Are you a wood guy or are you a rock guy? I was feeling this one. How long has Daniel been a student? Daniel has been a student as long Since as you. this morning. I've watched Bear Grylls. I know what I'm doing. First up, a guy who puts a watery world like this one here. It's plants, it's animals, it's own ecosystem into a jar. Little has a full-time job as a creative director at an agency. When he's not at work, he spends countless hours on these. I came across this concept of aquariums in jars, and there's non-filtered aquariums. No oxygen bubbler, no filter, uh, just relying on light for a planted ecosystem to exist. That fascinated me a lot because that means that I can have a small aquatic jar anywhere. Despite their small size, aqua jars give little lots of room for creativity. The most important step is deciding which plants go in, and this depends on their height, colour and leaf texture. Next, additional elements like rocks and wood. And finally, he chooses which critters will call these jars home. Little embarked on aquascaping to bond with his son through nature. It started with longkang fishing, with a duo called Tiny Fish and Drains. They brought the fishies home, put them in a tank, added some aquatic plants and have not looked back since. Are these your fish tanks? Yes. Nice. Do you take care of them all by yourself? Yes. That's a lot of responsibility. Really? All by yourself? <laughs> <laughs> Aqua jars are low-maintenance watery gardens. They need a change of water about once a week, plant trimming every two weeks, and most importantly, a strong source of light for the plants to thrive. Little is going to help me design my first aqua jar. It's time for plant and critter shopping. You know, just walking around, right, gives me so many ideas. And I just love all this moss that grows on it. So imagine I'm in some nature reserve in Japan, walking through this really cool forest, and I come upon this waterfall, and that's it. I get the vibe, so you get to have, you know, the great outdoors and the great indoors. Balance is one very important aspect in the planted tank, is the arrangement, the density of the plants. It's also down to the ecosystem itself, getting it balanced so that plants are flourishing and the animals that you put in stay alive and, and provide that visual pleasure for you for a long time. Is it time to buy some plants? Yep, you can pick the plants from here to make into your aqua jar. On this one, it's tall. <laughs> Yeah, that would make, make a good background plant. So the other thing you can look for also difference in size of leaves mm -hmm. and also texture, because you want to create that differentiation, the contrast between the groups. Good choice. That's okay. a nice bread. I might get you to do the catching. I'm scared to hurt them. What? <laughs> no, I'm not a gentle person. If your jar is going to be 10 cm, then you want a fish that's one fifth of that size. The idea is that this gives it enough room to swim and turn. Then it won't get stressed and die. Then it's aqua jar time. This is a big jar. It looks like a big responsibility. 
<laughs> well, a big job for a big guy, man. Okay. So the first thing to consider is, are you a wood guy or are you a rock guy? I was feeling this one. Yeah, that's a big, nice big one. They're decorative, but they're also surfaces for bacteria to grow. And bacteria is important because if there's not enough beneficial bacteria, you can't put fish because they'll die. Okay, so let's start planting. Okay, re-grip it and push it further into the soil. Release a little bit, wiggle. Do you find that this is gaining more public popularity? So what happened with our circuit breaker lockdown, right, in Singapore, was that it made a lot of people get in touch with nature. Again, an aqua jar itself, it's this miniature setting that you are constantly maintaining, right? Changing the water weekly, or trimming your plants, repositioning them. You know, it, it makes you look at things in such a detailed form that I think it gives people a different perspective of what nature could be. I'm pretty happy with this. Mm. How, how do you think I did? You know, for someone who hasn't planted, it's, you've done a great job. You know, you've kept the groupings of the plants together, the kind of colour grouping and the textures, right, they were very well matched. Nice. Brilliant job. Pass! <laughs> <laughs> From working with plants indoors to working with plants in Mother Nature, this is where the kampong spirit lives strong. Um, working on a farm. This is what kampong life was like in Yishun. Surely, such a lifestyle lived so close to nature must be a thing of the past? Well, I'm told that in this neighbourhood, there is a corner where the kampong spirit is still alive. This is Ground Up Initiative, or GUI. May has been a volunteer since 2010, and in the past one year, she has stepped up to lead this green community. It's very volunteer-centric in this what we call nature-inspired classroom. We have multiple types of uh, activities to attract different uh, people. The key of this whole farming thing is about farming the heart, ultimately. What does she mean by farming the heart? I'm going to find out by getting right into it. The Nyla family is taking me under their wing. They have been volunteering at this community farm for a year. I'll show you where we need to do the weeding first. All right. It's my first time doing all of this. I don't want to make mistakes and kill the plants. So you just need to compare the leaves at the bottom. If they're not the same, then you just need to weed them off. Um, working on a farm. Working on a farm. Take your other scissors and cut them into smaller pieces and then put them back down here. What we are doing is repurposing the weeds in order to ensure that the soil will get its nutrients. So the weeds has a purpose now. Cool. There was this one month where all our dedication was poured towards the eggplant uh, plot. We put the eggshells on the bottom snow so snails don't go up. And the cans are for the birds, so when the sunlight shines on it, it, they'll shoo the birds away. We came here to see all the brinjals dried up. So the kids got really very um, sad. But with the help of all the other volunteers, it's growing again. What's so amazing about this place is really the kampong spirit. Every one of us uh, have a place, have a role. When I come here, I just feel, like, feel free and just like relieve myself from some schoolwork for a while. So like, the next day, I'll be ready for anything in school. But farming isn't the only activity at GUI. Yutong is a familiar face at Touchwood, the woodworking arm of GUI. Today, he's conducting a workshop for children using recycled pallets. The mission? To build superhero toys. So I made this, and this is a Batman that is going to protect all the bats in the world. So over here, we are going to choose the pieces of wood that we will be using to make our little hero today. 
Daniel, what are you making? It's going to be a, a robot dog. It's half robot, half dog. We have not lived in a kampong before. Yeah, so we can only hear stories from uh, the older volunteers about uh, how they lived in the past. So there's a lot of sharing, uh, resourcefulness, putting together things and using, of course, your hands. So I guess the core of Ground Up is also about being close to the ground and, of course, getting our hands dirty and also working together as a community to build something. So when you're using the drill, I want both of your hands to be here, OK? Yeah, hold it tight. Hold it so that it doesn't spin you. I'm a little nervous. These kids are handling some really scary tools. How long has Daniel been a student? Daniel has been a student as long Since as you. Since this morning. Getting the young to challenge themselves is exactly what GUI is all about. Starting from children, um, we want them to venture, to discover. All this require you to have that little bit of courage to be able to risk take. The discovery will bring you to something amazing and creative. I might have made a mistake. This is going to have very uneven legs. All this hard work has made me hungry. I heard Derek is one of the most popular volunteers at GUI because he's always conducting cooking classes. This is the star of the show, an earth oven built by volunteers. I have to work for my pizza under the watchful eyes of Derek. This feels weird. It's very <laughs> sticky. Okay, if it feels sticky right now, it's normal. All right, keep going. We get to design our own pizzas. That means a walk to the garden for the freshest herbs, all grown by volunteers. This one, mint. Peppermint. This is laksa leaf. Ones? I know the smell. Yep. Anyone need laksa leaf for your pizza? Come. So we've got some edible flowers, laksa leaves some tiny chilies, and uh, this is my favourite one. This is what they used to make tom yum. So I'm going to try and make a tom yum pizza. Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Right? GY, the vision in mission is to create a playground for everybody in all age. As long as you have an idea, you can create anything you want. You make a mistake and redo it again. <laughs> It's a, it's a little burnt, but uh, it's fine. It's fine. All right, we're going to do the final part, which is good at topping. something really amazing. Put my heart and soul into well, this. I can see that. I think the concept that you have here at Ground Up, it's quite novel and it's very interesting to me. It's the kind of place where you come by for one event and you end up getting hooked <laughs> and staying for more and more and you really just start building this community of people right. in Singapore. And that's what we hope, that like, you inspire more people, you know, and to start up little community like ours. I think that will make Singapore a happier place to be. Mm. By working outdoors, caring for this space, and meeting all these people, I find myself being accepted into a community that bonds through nature. And I'm not done yet. Starting your own fire. Go, 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 go. While volunteering at Ground Up Initiative in Yishun, I caught a glimpse of something intriguing at a nearby field. Is that a Mongolian girl? Meet Scott, an adventurer who leads Singaporeans on overseas expeditions, and the person who brought a piece of Mongolia here. This is my first time inside a girl. Do you like it? 
I do. I feel very transported out of Singapore. When the pandemic halted those expeditions, he decided to instill a sense of exotic adventure in Singapore instead, with a girl gifted by the Mongolian embassy. If you're a fan of forest trekking and camping overseas, bushcraft is definitely your thing. We teach participants basic survival skills, starting our own fire, and get them to be well equipped with the right skill set of how to use specific bushcraft tools such as axes and saw. Lesson number one, how to make an emergency whistle from scratch. Fred is the man who will make sure that my emergency whistle will actually work in the wild. Softest wood is poplar. It will be harder to carve hardwood, but it will actually last longer. I'm going to go for the rosewood, because a lot of the guitars I have are rosewood. It's one of the best sounding woods. Daniel, don't, don't, don't chop through, slow down. You've got to be careful. So see, this is half, yeah? Perfect. Anything worth doing is worth doing well. But why did I pick the hardest wood? When you're out in the wild, you've only got limited tools to actually use. So we try to teach people to use what they actually have on hand in the current moment. And that's really what survival is about. Woodworking it is kind of intuitive. When I was first trying, I think I was going against the grain, so it was a bit harder. Yes. And then I learned to like follow the grain and go with it, and it became a lot easier. And it was like very calming. <laughs> So we would actually need to wedge the hole. We would actually take a branch, we would carve a cylinder, and then we'll carve a flat. Before we shove it in, it would probably make a sound. Once you get the sweet spot, it'll be really loud. How do I blow it? This way? All right, now we need to glue it, right? So well, now, you are done with the child's play. Now, it's business time, okay? So, I'm gonna split you guys in a group of two, and we're gonna do some mini competition. Whichever thing can start the fire first, the quickest, will win challenge number one. And challenge number two, continue to sustain the fire for at least 10 minutes using materials that you can find all around this campsite. Try these. Try these, all right, all right, let's go. We'll take this one minute to, to run away, get a head start. Oh, this looks like relatively dry. I've watched Bear Grylls. I know what I'm doing. Most people may think that I can just throw a few twigs and branches. You have to find the right kind of natural resources, but it's actually not as simple as that. Leaves, will it work? It's the most like paper-like thing we could find. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. <laughs> How hard can starting a fire be? I got the tinder, I got the twigs, and nothing happened. So there's a trick to get dry grass, especially after the rain. So follow me. All right. Pluck, 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 pluck. Okay. Just the surface, because that's this where it will dry out the fastest. Because you want to feel how dry the tinder mm -hmm. is. I found a lot of it. You change it around and you use a flatter area. Uh, the grass we got is really... Go, 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 go. Harder. I don't know how to keep this alive. Not bad. Come on, come on, come on, don't let it die. More leaves, more leaves. So Timmy, whatever stuff that you build right now is amazing. You want to be able to feed your fire with those hardwood over there that can burn for hours. Hover over it. Oh, my eyes. Oh. <laughs> All right, guys, time's out. We have our winner, which is Team A. Good job, guys. Awesome, awesome. And also, good job, guys. Yeah. Awesome. 
We did it. So right now, we'll be learning the fundamentals of each of these tools. We have knife, machete, axes, and saw over here. Step on it. Have you always had this love for adventure? Not for the first um, 20 years of my life. And then what sparked this love? Well, I think it all happened when I landed in Mongolia for the very first time about eight years ago. Being out in the vastness, I just felt so present, so connected with nature. That feeling is pure bliss. Bring it up. Sleep. All right. I want you to swing down. Okay, you're too far away. Can try again. Nice. <laughs> Do you think today was a very unique way of experiencing nature? Definitely. I mean, it's uh, something totally new, and especially like, experiencing it in Singapore. It's really like, amazing. What was your favourite part of today? Learning do not start fire with damp tinder is... <laughs> it's a very good lesson. I think I like chopping wood the most. It's something that made me feel very manly. What's <laughs> <laughs> up, <So>, man? <sighs> nice. Good job, guys. Amazing. Today was a physically and emotionally challenging day for me. I got really frustrated at some points because I guess I didn't really know what I was doing. But what I learned, it's really the individual pieces that you select that really make or break the day for you. In our hectic urban life, nature can be like a balm to our soul. Like if you build a watery world in a jar, develop some green fingers, and even challenge Mother Nature. Are there more ways nature can enrich my soul? You bet. <laughs>